Hell Jumpers, Chapter 12, Homeworld. Scootaloo was walking around the hallways of the frigate she was currently calling home. Small piles of bullet casing still lay strewn around and the walls still showed burn marks from the boarding attempt. Crew that was previously occupying cryotubes were slowly flowing into the hallways as they were being awakened to prepare for the arrival into the soul system. Oi, Scoots! A voice called out from behind her. Turning around, she could see a marine walking up to her. McCraker, she said as she saw one of the marines she had befriended before the boarding. Oh, so, um, how's Hopper? He didn't get himself killed, did he? The Scottish man chuckled. Nothing too bad, lass. We got off with a few light burns, he said, looking over at Scootaloo. You seem to have gotten a lot worse than any of us, laddie. Scootaloo grimaced a bit before replying. Yeah, I got lucky. If Lucy hadn't seen it, I would have been a goner. A light shiver ran down her spine. Ugh, um, anyway, uh, are you and the other guys up for some more exercises with my crew? The Marine shook his head. Ugh, sorry kid, I'm getting off this ship the moment we head out on Earth orbit. I've got some kin I want to visit down planet side. Scootaloo sighed. Ah, uh, well, um, have fun then. I'd like to go down to the planet, but we have to report to the Cario station, and I don't think Brass would let me down to the surface anyway, being an alien and all. Well, if they do let you and your friend come down, then you're welcome to stay over at my place, McGregor said while heading down another hallway. I'll keep that in mind, Scootaloo shouted before continuing walking towards the quarters that Twilight has gotten as a lab for her search for Equus. Along the way, she was keeping an eye out for Zoe as the pilot has been designated as non-essential and had been in cryo for the duration of the trip. Scootaloo grinned a bit as she thought back of the movie marathon, and Lucy had pulled out a series of films called Lord of the Rings. A bit violent by pony standards, but then again, it wasn't like the orcs had a scratch on the Covenant. The doors to Twilight's room slid open, revealing a purple alicorn sleeping on a desk covered in paper and multiple data pads. Scootaloo rolled her eyes and walked over to Twilight. It hadn't been the first time that she had fallen asleep while working in the last two weeks. Twilight! Scootaloo screamed into her ear, and Twilight shot up from the table screaming. Scootaloo! Uh, gosh, what did I say about screaming in my ear? She shouted back, trying to get her heart rate back under control. We arrived in the soul system. We'll be back at Earth in about three hours and report to the Cario station. I take it you haven't looked at your messages since you managed to sleep through the alarm, signaling the exit from slip space. Scootaloo told Twilight, who immediately grabbed one of the data pads and used a pencil to look up through her messages. Um... Did your orders tell why we were going to Cairo, Scoots? She asked, turning a bit pale. Scootaloo looked a bit confused. Um, no. It only stated that we had to report to Cairo in our dressed uniforms. I assume that we're gonna meet with some brass. Twilight hoofed the tablet over to Scootaloo, who quickly read Twilight's version of the orders. Lord Hood. Scootaloo slowly said as she finished reading. Fleet Admiral Lord Terence Hood wants us to come to Cairo? Twilight retrieved her data pad and put it back onto the table. We should get dressed as soon as possible, so we're immediately ready when we arrive. Scootaloo nodded in agreement, and the two ponies rapidly made their way to the storage locker where they had stored their black uniforms. So, you have no idea what this is about then? Mac asked while escorting Twilight and Scootaloo to the airlock, connecting to the crippled frigate to the defense platform. No. Other than that, it's on the Admiral's request, uh, absolutely nothing. Twilight replied as the group reached the door connecting to the ship to the space station. Then, good luck with whatever. We didn't get the invite, so you two are, well, you're on your own. Mac told the two before turning around and heading back into the ship. Twilight looked to Scoots and proceeded into the station where several Marines were waiting. Private Sparkle, Private Hurricane, if you would follow us. The lead marine said, and Twilight and Scootaloo nodded, and their group made their way to the station's transport system. Along the way, they got a few glances from bypassers, but mostly they just seemed to be too preoccupied to care about the ponies. One of the things that Twilight liked about the station over the ship was that there were windows literally everywhere, allowing for a good view of space and bits of Earth as where the warship only had armor, and any view outside was via cameras on the hull. The group stepped into the train to the command center and settled down. So, they said you two were on reach when the Covenant attacked? One of the Marines, a corporal, said as the door to the train closed. Yes, sir. Twilight replied to the Marine, and to their credit, none of them flinched at hearing Twilight speaking. 
although that was probably due to them being better briefed than previous escorts. Okay, uh, do you two know how hard New Alexandria got hit? I had a family there and I don't know if they got out. He asked, hoping the ponies knew about anything what the situation on the ground was on reach, and Scootaloo spoke up first. Discord would be proud at the shit show. I mean, we got a very large portion of the civilians out, but the city got attacked by brutes, so there were still a lot of casualties. She told the Marine, who looked to be glad to get new information from Reach. The train stopped and the Marines formed up again, and moved quickly to the command center. Walking into the command center, the pony saw a lot of booths, where operators were busy at the front of the room, and a large screen was present. At the large screen, an old man was presented tapping some commands into a console. Sir! Sir. The group stood at the ready as the Admiral turned and saw the ponies. You're dismissed, Marines. He told their escorts, who saluted, and headed out of the room. Now, since Oni has been a bit overzealous about keeping any and all information about you off any network, the orders you probably got told you next to nothing, Lord Hood said, taking a deep breath before continuing. Private Sparkle, please step forward. Twilight took a step forward and stood up on her hind legs to get closer to the height of the Admiral. She noticed an officer carrying a box and stepped closer from the side. Private Sparkle, due to your actions on the stalwart Dawn, the ship avoided capture. Even though the reports tell me the way you did it was, in your own opinion, less than satisfactory, the fact still remains that by your actions, the crew of the stalwart Dawn is still alive today. As the first alien to receive an award from the UNSC, I hereby present you with the Bronze Star for your extraordinary act of bravery. You have done the UNSC proud, Private. The Admiral pinned the star on Twilight's chest and saluted, a gesture Twilight gladly returned. As a second order of business, Private Sparkle, I have an admission to make, Lord Hood stated. When we first decided to allow you and your companion to join the Corps, the intention was to keep you in reserve while you searched for your homeworld. But when the Covenant attack reached, we had no choice but to deploy you two in battle. Don't get me wrong, your actions on the battlefield are valued highly but you're more of value to the UNSC alive than dead." Twilight pondered for a moment, but she could see the reasoning behind the idea. Without her chances of possibly getting an alliance would be a lot slimmer than if she were there. I understand, sir, she replied. The Admiral nodded. You may report back to the stalwart Dawn, he said, turning back to a console, but before Twilight could leave, Scootaloo stepped forward. Um, sir, permission to speak freely? Lord Hood turned to the Pegasus. Granted, he simply stated. Sir, we have been stuck on spaceships for a large amount of time in our stay here, and when we weren't on a spaceship, we were either training or fighting. Is there a possibility that we could get authorization for shore leave on the planet, sir? She asked, and Lord Hood immediately answered. I will run it by Office of Naval Intelligence, but I'm afraid I wouldn't know where you would be allowed to stay while on Earth. There's a marine from the Dunn who offered us to give us a place to stay in Scotland," Scootaloo added, and Lord Hood thought about it for a moment. Alright. Um, take a pelican and notify that marine to pick you up. I'll keep Oni off your backs. Scootaloo and Twilight saluted again, and made their way out of the control room. That was incredibly reckless, Twilight stated after they got out of earshot of the command center. You know, you just asked the fleet admiral to do you a personal favor. Right? Scootaloo grinned. Well, it worked, didn't it? Twilight shook her head, unable to suppress a smile. Call your friend that we're coming. I might as well make the best of it while it lasts. I'll ask if Matt and the others can get leave too. Scootaloo went ahead and called the number she had gotten from McGregor, while Twilight called Mac. Fifteen minutes later, the two got approached by a pilot and were heading down to the planet minutes later. The pelican they had gotten reached Scotland within the hour and sat down at a small airport. Oni had managed to get a request to the ponies to stay in the Pelican to prevent too much exposure, so they waited until McGregor reached the airport. So, since you managed to get us to leave, I take it that you also have an idea of what to do down there? Twilight asked, to which Scootaloo just shrugged. Well, anything is better than being cooped up in a spaceship, and I, for one, want to practice flying on my own for a bit. Twilight groaned and turned her gaze outside where she could see a car approaching. I think your man is here, Scoots, she said as the car came to a halt at the ramp of the Pelican and the Scottish Marine stepped out. Didn't you say you didn't think you would get leave, lassie? He said with a smile. 
Come on, get in. I had an appointment with a local pub before you called me. Twilight grimaced as she heard that they were coming to a bar. Going to a bar might not be the best of ideas, she told McGregor. Last time Scoots nearly electrocuted someone, I'd really not like to repeat that. Don't worry, lass, they're all buddies of mine, they won't do a thing, he reassured Twilight. Get on in, we've got a bit of a ride ahead of us. One does not simply walk into a bar without drinking, McGregor, Twilight said as she entered the car which caused Scootaloo to snicker. Pfft, nerd, she said before also getting into the car.